A sinkhole has opened up in Godston, which is a little village very near where I live. And I thought, well, I'm going to have to come and look into it. When I look at this sinkhole, I think, does it actually qualify as a sinkhole? Because a sinkhole is normally a geological thing that happens, that occurs. But this looks like it might just be a leaking water main or something like a leaking drain. We've had a lot of rain lately and the road does tend to collapse. But whatever it is, it's major disruption and a real headache for the people living around here. Not only has it cut this busy road off from the M25, but a lot of the people living around here have had to move out and go and live in temporary accommodation, either at a hotel or, heaven forbid, with their in-laws. Now, you might think that the question of whether it's a sinkhole or whether it's just washed away from a water main is an academic point. I mean, a hole's a hole, isn't it? But for the people living around here, that distinction is very important because there are lots of caves around here dating back to Roman times. They quarried quite a lot of stone from here and a lot of that was sent into London. Not particularly good stone, by the way. They call it Malmstone or Rygate stone and it's a very soft sandstone. These caves are all over the place and people don't even know where they all are they're not all mapped out so it could be that the caves have contributed to it it could be something else but if it is a sinkhole and if sinkholes are a thing here you can see the property prices going through the floor i mean would you want to buy a house on the edge of a sinkhole or even on a sinkhole now, sinkholes are a fact of life in many parts of the country. In fact, the top place for sinkholes is Ripon in Yorkshire. And there are also sinkholes down in other limestone areas. You can look down in Wookie Hole, Cheddar Gorge, and you can even look in Wales for sinkholes. They're all over the place. But this area here doesn't even rank in the top 10 of sinkholes. So it's very unlikely that this is a blighted area. And I have to say, though, that even though it's not in the top 10, we have had three sinkholes open up in this immediate area in the last couple of years. Now, let me just explain what sinkholes are and why they occur. You have in certain areas water-soluble rock. Now, that would be limestone and it would be gypsum, as in Ripon, it's gypsum. And what happens is the water, the acidic water, runs through and it makes great caverns. Hence, Wookie Hole and Danarogoff Caves in Wales. The water for millions of years makes its way through underground rivers and opens up great caverns. And then eventually the ground will collapse and you'll end up with a sinkhole. Now, there are sinkholes and there are sinkholes. This one here is pretty big. We tend to measure sinkholes by how many cars will go into it. Well, this has gone beyond cars now. This is into the double-decker bus category. And in America, where sinkholes are very common, Florida's got loads of them, Arizona's got loads of them, Pennsylvania's got lots of them, although that could be something to do with the mining. But bizarrely, in America, they tend to measure sinkholes by how many washing machines will fit into them. And if they get really big and the washing machine thing gets a bit cumbersome, they change to fridges. Have a look at this one. How many fridges do you think you can get in there? So anyway, this is the Rygate stone and this isn't actually water soluble. It flakes away, as you can see here, but it's not water soluble. It's just not very good stone but it won't cause the same kind of sinkhole problems that you get in other parts of the country. So I cry foul. I don't think this is a sinkhole at all. I think this is just a hole in the road and it happens. So this is the site of a sinkhole that happened just about a year ago outside my favorite plumber's merchants in Red Hill. This sinkhole opened up all of a sudden and the guys in the plumber's merchants, Gary, phoned the police and he said to them, you need to get down here fast. There's a sinkhole just opened up in the middle of the A23. And unbelievably, the police said, well, it's not really our problem. You have to phone the council. And he said, mate, it will be your problem if a car goes down it. You need to get a car down here, preferably with a flashing blue light on the top, and park it in front of a sinkhole to stop a catastrophe. And at that point, uh, the police decided that they would, after all, come and attend even though it's not strictly their department. So there's the site of the sinkhole or road collapse, whichever you want to call it. And it looks to me like it's beginning to collapse again. I don't think the story is over as far as this particular sinkhole is concerned. 
So this is the third of the sinkholes that I wanted to show you and it's rather a pathetic little hole isn't it really? Would you even call this a sinkhole? It looks to me like there's been a bit of drainage work here at some time and I would suspect this is a leaking rainwater drain and it's just washed some of the ground away. Now I happen to know a little bit about this area because I live just down the road. I got my information from the British Geological Survey which is a free service you can go online we're going to put links in the description below and you can look up up on the British Geological Survey the ground where you live and find out exactly what it's made of. It's really marvellous and I found out that this is made on what they call a hive formation, a ridge that goes all the way through this part of Surrey and it was 23 million years ago when a glacier formed this and pushed all this stuff up from Hythe which is now on the coast but wasn't then and it pushed it up and it kind of just pushed it in a, a kind of semicircle, if you like and it goes all the way out and it disappears just about Farnham which is beyond Guildford and so this is made up of some strange different materials. It's got a lot of sand in it and it's also got these massive great lumps of ironstone in it which baffled me for years because when I was digging soakaways in my garden I'd be happily going through sand and then suddenly I hit this ironstone and have to get a kango out to break through it. But the point is it's pretty stable ground. It's been there for 23 million years. If you want to find out about that and also about the insurance risk because we've got an insurance risk going from 1 to 10 and this would be down around the 1 mark even though we've had three sinkholes here but it goes right up to 10 which would be Ripon. Now of course the insurance companies have a risk scale for everything they calculate the odds on any particular event happening so sinkholes are there and also being hit by a meteorite is also there and those two things are not mutually exclusive because sometimes you find that when you see a great crater in the ground it's not a sinkhole at all but it's the site of a meteorite hit and I've travelled around various places around the world and you do see these great chasms in the ground and very often there's a local legend attached to these things they tell you this was a giant's footstep or where a giant got cross it's always a giant's I don't know whether giants are always angry have they never heard of the big friendly giant but anyway they hurl these rocks across and the rocks end up making a massive great crater in the ground and that's what they believed or that's what they told their children for years until they found out about such things as meteorites. But of course there is one more explanation for all these sinkholes opening up which seems to be gaining traction on social media and that is that sinkholes are the work of aliens. I hope all that's useful to you and all I can say is if you are worried about sinkholes and you are worried about meteorites hitting you then you're probably just a born warrior. I'm Roger Bisbee, I try not to worry. Come back and see us soon. Yeah.